Um, well, first, I'd just like to say I'm, you know, I'm happy to be here. Just got in this morning, so I've um, been able to get around the facility a little bit. Um, I actually took a walk during lunch and, you know, walked outside and walked past the stadium and did those things. So I'm just trying to get ingratiated with the place. Um, I drove through downtown. So the many times I've came here to play, um, I've recruited this area, but I've never actually been downtown, downtown. So I actually got to drive through downtown this morning a little bit. So um, got in this morning, met with some of my guys. Um, you know, I was actually just in a special team meeting that I got pulled out from now. So just trying to get myself um, comfortable with everything going on here. I'm excited to be here and, you know, ready to get uh, hit the ground running. All right, first question goes to Mike Gillespie. Hey, it would help if I unmuted myself. Yeah, uh, I got hey, you. Ontario, uh, welcome to Columbia. Just a, a quick question for you. Um, you might have two of the best running backs in the SEC coming back. Uh, wondering it, how much of a factor that was in this decision and if you've seen those guys play. Well, of course, I, I've seen them play. Um, you know, Lloyd didn't get to play last year, but, you know, I was at another place seeing his recruitment. And, you know, I, re I recruited the D.C. area. So just seeing him as a player, he was one of my favorite guys coming out that year. So um, to have him here in the fold and him coming back off an of injury, I was able to talk to him today. And, you know, the craziest thing is I actually had that same injury my freshman year and was able to bounce back and be a all SEC player. So just kind of talk to him. I can help him out with those things, any little help he need with that. And then just seeing Kevin Harris come on last year, um, you know, I watched the game against, the opening game against Tennessee early in the season and then just to watch more games later on in the year. And, you know, early on he wasn't the main guy, but how he persevered through that and just came through, you know, running the peel last year. And, you know, uh, he's a he's a, he's a big, stocky, sturdy guy, but he runs the ball hard, man. He, he has explosive plays. And, um, you know, the other thing about those two guys is just meeting with those guys this morning, those two guys are very smart, man. They're going to be really smart running backs, and that's what you need in our system because it's going to be very running back essential, but it's going to be NFL style. So you have to know pass protection, run routes, you know, all type of different type of zone plays that we got inside, outside, you know, the different things we're going to do. But those guys are engineering majors, man. So those are really smart running backs as well. So I think they're good kids, but had, hearing nothing but good things about them. Um, so I'm excited to get to work with those guys. Let's go to George Stoyer in Denver. Hey, Monterio. Um, I actually have a, a couple really unique questions for you. Um, I was talking to Coach uh, Latrell Scott this morning over at Norfolk State, uh, and he mentioned you because I was talking to him about Christian Parker uh, and he was talking about how you guys were, were two guys that obviously rose in the ranks. Christian just got the job here in Denver as the DB's coach. I just wanted to ask you first, what do you remember about working with Christian? Um, did you guys help each other? Obviously, you guys are two young guys that have, have risen pretty quickly. And secondly, uh, you guys both kind of got your starts at HBCUs. And I think, you know, talking to Coach Scott, sounds like that's really been a trend the last few years as you see a lot of these assistants from you know, uh, historically black colleges getting, you know, big time jobs, whether it be in the SEC or or uh, even professional football like like Parker. So I, those are my two questions are a little bit unique. But uh, first about Parker and then secondly, just about, you know, assistance in HBCUs. It was, um, you know, I, I call Christian, I call him CP. So, you know, CP is my guy. He was all, he's like the same age as my little brother, one year younger. But, you know, it was kind of like a, you know, kind of that type of role where I was kind of mentoring him as kind of been a younger guy, but he was always been smart as a whistle, man. You know, smart, smart, smart. You know, uh, was was a really, uh, really smart young coach there. He helped do a lot of special team things when I was special team coordinator. And, um, you know, I, I knew he would always be great. He was really good with relationships. So, I'm, as, you know, I'm, I'm proud of him going to Denver. And I think he's going to, you're going to see the, his his imprint on that secondary once he gets there. And, you know, just Norfolk State and, you know, HBCUs in general. I have family that went to HBCUs. Um, I was recruited by HBCUs. So, for me, um, you know, again, with Coach Scott, who – was the wide receiver coach at Tennessee when I played running back there, who had came from University of Richmond, who had also been the head coach at University of Richmond. So, you know, coached at Virginia as well. So, you know, he, he had some ranks in coaching that he wanted to be at Norfolk State and to get that program better. So I wanted to go there and help. And I, it was early in my coaching career. And, you know, I, I actually picked that opportunity instead of going to be a, a GA at like a bigger school or, you know, uh, Power five school, you know, just getting into it. I wanted to coach my own position and learn how to recruit and do those things. So, you know, I enjoy my time at Norfolk State. Um, and I, I think as a whole, we have some other young coaches on that staff that also have, you know, 
grown and risen in different places. So I really think Coach Scott is a good coach, and I think CP, you know, I I, I think he I think he's going to be a defensive coordinator, head coach, and his thing one day, man, because he's very organized, meticulous at, at, at what he does. He puts in the hours, and he relates well with the guys. So I'm excited for him, and, you know, coaching the HBCU was great. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to Eric Boynton. Hello, Ontario. Eric Boynton with the Spartan Red Herald Journal. Uh, in your short coaching career, um, you've had a number of different, held a number of different positions. Now you're back for the first time since your first job at Norfolk State coaching the running backs. If you have a choice to coach any position just because it's what you played, is, is getting back to just being in that running backs room solely, is that kind of most near and dear to your heart? That's an interesting question. So honestly, um, you know, here the coach of running backs here to had Kevin Harris, you know, my guy coming back and, you know, being an SEC coach and running backs, that was always one of the dreams of mine in coaching. You know, early on, I wanted to show coaches and show myself that I can coach other positions. And also, um, you know, for later on in life, you know, I want to continue to, you know, to be good, to be able to organize offenses and things like that. So I wanted to get on the outside and you know, first and foremost, just me being a running back, receivers used to not be able to block a lot. So, you know, I want to kind of evolve those guys into the into the run game, but then also understand, you know, the reads of the quarterback, the different things that the wide receiver has to do, you know, whether I have a route that's locked or, you know, understanding the coverages. And those things, I think, help you being a running back coach because I always say the safeties don't lie. So as far as the pass protection and those things, those safeties, they're going to tell you where it's at. They, those guys cannot lie. So that helps us in the pass protection and also help us, you know, to know if it's quarters defense and I have a choice right out of the backfield to know where those guys are going to be. So I think that only going to help me in coaching running backs. But, you know, coaching running back is what I've played my entire life, literally. Like, I've been a running back since I was seven years old. So that has always been near and dear to my heart. And, um, you know, to coach really good running backs and to be an SEC coach with them has been a dream of mine. And I always say running backs are the energy starters. So the one thing that I want my, that I want you to see from my guys when we start spring ball and uh, start this thing going is that those guys are bringing passion and energy every day to the field. We're going to be the energy starters for the team. Hill McGranahan. Hey, Coach, I'm Hale McGranahan, the BigSpur.com. Uh, welcome to Columbia. I, I, I wanted to, to ask you about uh, coaching in general. Was it just something that you knew you always wanted to do when you were done playing, or was there a certain point uh, in your career when you decided that, that that was the route you wanted to take? Uh, so I, I like to say I was always a coach, you know. Um, so growing up, I'm from New Bern, North Carolina. Um, at my high school, New Bern High, we were always a really good program in football, but there were always times where we had guys that were good enough to go Division One and play football, but they didn't have the grades or they didn't have the work effort or those things like that. So a funny story is like my group, my four, my four close friends and my little brother, you know, um, we all went to college. We all went to Division One football college, and I consider myself coaching those guys along. I used to get us up in the morning, and you know, we used to work out and do things like that. And um, you know, the, the biggest thing why I knew I wanted to coach college football was. You know, I'm at Tennessee. I'm majoring in sports management and doing the business, uh, doing a business administration double major. And um, I'm junior year, and I'm sitting over my running back coach, and I just got elected captain of the team. And I was kind of like, I didn't know I was gonna be the captain because I really didn't try to over talk anybody to be the captain. But you know, uh, my coach just kind of said that you know guys kind of gravitate towards how you act, you do the right things, and you know I hire you as a coach. And at that point, it kind of got me thinking, well, you know, I, I think when I'm done, I do want to come back and coach some because I always had great coaches along the way, you know, that, that, you know, from starting at seven years old, AAU track and AAU basketball, getting out and seeing the world, getting out and seeing more than just Newborn, North Carolina, going to California, Oregon to run track meets, going to Hershey, Pennsylvania for, you know, AAU basketball things, going to D.C. So I always wanted to coach. I think my passion in coaching is, is, is helping guys in building relationships. So that's the biggest thing for me is helping those guys get from point A to point B, which is if you see a coach, that's what it's defined to do. Let's go to Mitch Brown. Hey, Coach. Um, spent a lot of time in Norfolk, uh, at Norfolk State and went to Old Dominion. But um, welcome to the area uh, over at Watch Fox Sports as well. Uh, you mentioned uh, getting your start um, in 2015 at Norfolk State. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, if you look back six years ago, um, just how much you've grown as a coach and a person. Uh, what's been the biggest thing as you've gone throughout this journey on your different stops that you've learned about yourself and as a coach? Well, actually, my start was at Chowan University, a, a Division II school in North Carolina before I went to Norfolk State. So um, I was there, you know, I was fresh out the league at, at that point. So literally had just um, retired in January and really didn't retire in January. I really didn't retire until about May because I was I had a knee injury. So I was rehabbing that. And about May was when I 
figured that you know that knee wasn't gonna come back right. It was the end of my contract, so it was time to get in, going to the next thing. And um, you know, from just Chowan, just I was just kind of fresh. You know, happy to be there, um, learning on the job as I was going. You know, learning how to really structure things and, and kind of how to organize myself as a coach. So going from there to Norfolk State, getting around a lot of a lot a lot of really good coaches. Um, you know, Cornell Brown, CP, Anthony Parker, who's now in Georgia Tech, Aaron Corp, who's running back, who's a quarterback coach at, you know, been at Richmond, Mike Fairgale, who won a championship at um, at Richmond as the OC. So getting around those guys kind of helped me with my, you know, organization and, and, you know, really, really, really learning how to recruit more and, you know, doing those things. And that's where I kind of relationship part came into it, where I really learned those two years, the bit of relationship with my guys that I'm recruiting, but also, Coach Scott gave me an opportunity to be the special team coach. So I was able to get a relationship with each guy on the team. So, you know, coaching running backs, but also having a relationship with the corners, with the linebackers, you know, all those guys playing my special team unit. So just growing in that area, I, I think is the most. And, you know, when I first started, I was 26. Uh, my birthday just passed February 1st. Now I'm 34 years old. So just so just more mature. Um, you know, I've, 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 I've been places and coaches. So I think Playing and coaching have both helped me with perseverance and kind of going through some adverse situations, which I've been at in both things. So I think I'll be able to share that knowledge with my guys. John Del Bianco. Hey, Montario. I'm John Del Bianco with TheBigSpur.com, 24-7 Sports. Welcome to Columbia. Um, as, a, as a former running back and now getting to, you know, recruit these guys, recruit that position, what are some intangibles, some things you want to check off the box, you know, on and off the field for, for guys you want to bring to Columbia? Well, first and foremost, um, like we talked about today, I think the biggest thing for me is to get in here and recruit my guys back. You know, um, make sure that my guys know that I'm here to help them. Uh, make sure I build that trust and build a relationship with my guys that I have here because I think we have talent and guys here on the roster. Um, you know, but just to add to that, you know, and recruiting, I'm always looking for guys who can make you miss in the phone booth, I always say. So, you know, re really good short area, change of direction. I'm always looking for that burst. Um, I want to see guys that, that run with balance and run behind their pads and, you know, be at, are able to use a weapon and do those things and, you know, finish. At, at the end of the day, I'm watching the high school guy on tape. I'm watching his change of direction. I'm watching the move defenders. I watch his burst. But also now is you, the safety, and the backside corner coming. Are you going to finish that play, whatever it takes to, you know, to get that home run hit? Um, you know, pass protection, I want a guy that's, that's willing to do so, but I can teach those things once you get here around me. So just and then from other than that, I'm looking for your character off the field. So I'm going to ask and dig and, you know, learn things about you, see about your leadership, see about your character, you know, see about how, how competitive you are. And, you know, those are things I want to bring here, you know, guys that are competitive, you know, um, guys that are smart. And then those things on the football field that I already mentioned. Thank you. Josh Kendall. Hi, Coach. Uh, Josh Kendall with The Athletic. I saw that you were recruited by both South Carolina and Virginia Tech, and I wondered how far you actually got down the road with those schools and if you remember meeting Shane's dad in that process. Of course. So um, so when I told my dad that I was actually coming here to uh, – or that I was actually going about to interview with um, Coach Beamer, uh, he actually brought up when I went to Virginia Tech. This was 2004, November 2004. Um, after my second round playoff game, I went there, they played against Virginia. So I was actually telling coach that I probably would have been in one of his rooms in his house because I actually, you know, one of the visits on Saturday was to go to Coach Beamer house. But, you know, he was already coaching at that point as well. So just kind of a little joke there. But I remember going to Virginia Tech. Um, I enjoyed my time there. And, um, you know, it, it was it was kind of down to, you know, they were in my top three or four schools at the end of the day. But I, I remember the visit vividly and you know I mean it was cold out there when I went but they, they had a, tradi a, a tradition of running back they had some guys from my from North Carolina there so I, I remember the visit and um, I actually brought that up with Coach Beamer. Thank Good Eric Boynton. Ontario kind of a two-parter um, you're still a, a young guy do you ever allow yourself instances to where you look back and think oh man what might have been for you as an NFL player if you hadn't gotten hurt and then part B how blessed are you that you did get hurt and have your career come to an end at a young age? For a lot of guys, that means the end of their football life. You obviously are just building a career where it looks like you're going to be involved in football for as long as you want to be. All right. Well, that's a great twofold question. So I guess, honestly, I always had a plan to coach even. So in my mind, I thought 
you know, I'm going to get drafted, go to the league. When I'm, you know, they want to kick running backs out around 30 or so, they say. So I was going to play till I was 30, 32, and then get into coaching. Um, you know, unfortunately, my rookie year, I tore my ACL and then, you know, had to fight those next three years out to get my four in. But, um, you know, it was a blessing in disguise both times. You know, I, I, I had to deal with that in the NFL and I had to deal with that my, my, my first year when I was in college. So it kind of it kind of it kind of built a little bit of character in me as well. But I was going to get into coaching. It just sped up the timeline a little bit. So I'm 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 happy to be here building relationships because, like I said, but the biggest thing for me, even when I was playing, you know, a lot of guys that I played with that was actually in my running back room, I still talk to them to this day. You know, at Tennessee, those guys, Arian Foster, Jail Riggs, Torrin Poole, you know, guys that I played with in Cleveland, Chris Obanaya, Brandon Jackson, you know, a lot of guys that I played with down the line, Thomas Brown, who who, who was here. Um, I always wanted to help guys and kind of be a positive influence and help those guys grow. So I, I think I'm I think I'm in my calling either way, and I was going to get here. Um, I was going to get here by some point. Do you allow yourself to dream though a little bit about what might have been if you stayed healthy for ten? Oh, man, years? Of, of course I think about that all the time. I was starting as a rookie, so yeah, I'm thinking you know, rookie, yeah, I'm about to go get the fantasy league player of the year, all those things. So you know, all those things go through my mind all the time. But I think I think certain things happen for a reason. So I kind of let once I got back from those injuries, you know, that dream was kind of gone. It was kind of like let's focus on the next thing. So of course I think back all the time and think you know if I could have done that, if I could have done that. But I'm I'm content with what happened and I'm ready to move forward now. Mike Gillespie. Ontario, you're a Tennessee icon, obviously, and still beloved in Knoxville. You know, I think you know where I'm going with this one. Is it going to be weird uh, this year to now be on the opposite sidelines from your alma mater? I don't think it'd be weird at all. Um, you know, I, I enjoy my time there. There's still some people and relationships that I still have a good, you know, that I still have a good relationship with there. Um, I'm sure to be, I'm sure to be fun to kind of. You know, do you know had had going back and forth with the, with those guys in the orange? But honestly, um, I'm 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 happy to be here. I'm grateful for this opportunity here, and you know those relationships that I have in Knoxville, those will still stay. You know, that'll be the same thing. That was a place where I grew up. You know, grew up as a man. Spent you know went from 18 to 22 there. But I'm 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 good here, and I'm I'm looking forward for the matchup. Matt Connolly. Can you share anything about this process of ending up at South Carolina and why this was the right fit for you and, and now is the right time? Uh, well, you know, uh, Coach Satterfield and um, Coach Beamer were actually both in, in Tennessee at one point coaching. Um, I already had a good relationship. I already had a relationship with Coach Satterfield. I, I knew Coach Beamer kind of from, you know, I, I went to go to Virginia Tech to visit with his, with his dad and I played against him when he was at Mississippi State, and he was here at South Carolina, so um, we didn't really cross paths as much. But Coach Greg Atkins was my offensive line my first couple of years at uh, Tennessee. Um, you know, I, I was telling Coach Step that he was that he was my favorite follow on Twitter when I started coaching receivers. I always followed him a lot, see what he was doing. Um, so I, I I just think the familiarity with the guys here, and and just when I finally got on the call with uh, Coach Beamer and Coach Satterfield, just how I felt like a really good spot. I like what they were building. Um, I like the roster here. Um, you know, I, I think I think this place has all the potential to be to be a great football place. And always my favorite place to play at as a player. You know, coming here tonight, I played two night games here when I was at Tennessee. So coming here and playing was also always my, my one of my favorite places to play. Um, the facility here is amazing, um, top notch. So I, I really just think this is a top notch program. And I think we can build something special here. And just to follow up, can you share a little bit about the the times you played here and the, what I guess what stood out, their atmosphere, anything like that? So my, my first time coming here in 2006, I had never actually been inside the football stadium here. And I got down and was like, man, yeah, you know, this is, so, you know, of, of, of course the, the intro, but you know, when you guys come out, you know, you got the sandstorm going, us actually not you guys when at, at that point you guys but now when we come out you know we play sandstorm but as a as a, as a visiting team coming out and you have to go past the, the 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 whole student section there and they're going crazy and the towels are and the towels are going to me that's like intimidating for the opposite team and so I'm I'm excited to see you know some fans back in there if, as as long as we get this thing um un, under control with what's going on now and the, um throughout this pandemic but just the atmosphere here man it's so much. You know, I mean, just so much, just so much energy in the building. It's crazy to explain it. And then, you know, every, every time they get a good, big play or get a first down, you gotta, you gotta hear that that I just heard out here going. So, I mean, to me, it's a great place to play, man. Great atmosphere. Somehow, I think that's gonna show up somewhere on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Hale McGranahan with the next one. 
sort of on that topic. Are, are there any of the guys that you played against who were, who were at South Carolina at that time who you really kind of remembered and stood out to you? Any of those names that, that you can recall? Uh, yeah, well, first, uh, Chris Culliver, you know, he, he ran, he ran track with my, with my little brother growing up. Um, and you know, we kind of had some banner back and forth. Uh, he's about to say he's the same age as, as my little brother. So, you know, I made a nice little move on him throughout, throughout, throughout my time here. Um, Norwood, um, you know, we actually trained together, um, down in Florida. And so I would always see him a lot. We came out of draft the same years. Uh, Stefan Gilmore actually trained at the same place where I trained out in Florida as well. He came out a little bit after me, but he was a really good player there. Um, you know, th those are the guys that, you know, those are the guys that really stand out to mind, guys that I competed against. And Shaq, you know, of course, Shaq, who's here, I, I coach with Shaq. Um, you know, this is my second time being with Shaq coaching. Um, Byron, who I'm, who, uh, Byron Jarrett, who was a beast up front, I didn't ever have to see him out there too much. So, um, you know, he was there playing in that. Also, Gaithers, who was the defensive end that was about 6'6", he actually was in Cleveland with me. So I remember a lot of guys from South Carolina, and just right there, that shows you the pipeline that South Carolina has to get the guys to the next level and the type of talent that's been here. So I, I, mean, I, I, I think this place is, is I, I think we can do really big things here. So I, I just got excited just kind of rambling through those names. Let's go to our resident Browns fan, Colin Taylor. Yeah, I'm Ontario, a resident Browns fan on the beat. So I remember in the early 2010s, you playing for the Browns on some not great teams. Uh, I'm curious, two questions for you. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to bring up bad memories. Uh, two questions, but did you anticipate an actual rooster being in the building on your first day of work here? You see that? I didn't anticipate that necessarily, but I was literally just in a special team meeting, and all of a sudden, it just got, it, it felt like, 10 minutes straight, about every minute they were, they were, it was going. So I'm like, is there one outside? I should go outside and look. But I wasn't expecting that to happen. No, sir. And I guess when you evaluate this roster and as you're coaching these guys, how do you judge progress? What things are you looking at from your group, whether it's statistics or certain things that you evaluate to say, okay, I'm getting the group. In a little bit right there, but I, but I can answer that with, um, for me as, as a coach, like each week and each day, I want to try to get, you know, some people say it's cliche, but I always say process driven. You know, there's a good friend of mine, Inky Johnson, for introducing me to that stand a long time ago. So each day is a process. And, you know, I think you need to set goals for the day as far as individually and those things. But as our group, which I, I'm not sure exactly what those goals are yet, but say, one day we're running inside zone and we don't have our steps right. Or as, a, as an individual, you know, um, Kev didn't do some right in pass protection. And as a, as a group, there's a, you know, six man slide protection that we're not understanding. So can we get better with that from one day to the next? Um, you know, as, as, as far as being, you know, I'm a stickler on body language and being positive and, you know, doing those things around the building. So were you, were you moping around and, and not acting that way one day? Can we fix that? You know, so for me, progress kind of just taking baby steps, but it's always a process towards your finished goal, your main goal. So whether that's a short-term goal, whether in the week we have to do these things or by the year we got to do these things or by the end of the semester, I want all my running backs to do this. You know, that's how I, that's kind of how I measure um, progress, but I'm not really, I'm not really ready yet to say exactly what we need to, you know, progress on until I see those guys moving around. Eric Boynton. Any insight? Uh, you mentioned Adkins. Any any insight or memories of Greg Adkins? We got to speak to him a few weeks ago, and he seems like one of those uh, coaching lifers, one of those guys that just bleeds football. What are, what are your former impressions of him, and now being reunited with him, Ontario? I mean, first, I think he's a you know I, I think he's a really good coach, really good teacher, um, really good motivator. He, I mean, he's we always had really good offensive linemen. I, I think he's a great at with evaluating offensive linemen that fit his scheme and fit what he wants to do. And at the end of the day, he's an old school, old line coach. So he's going to get after it. But I think he has a good relationship with, with his, with his guys up front. So I have nothing but, I have nothing but good things. I'm happy to be back with him. Uh, we've kind of been keeping in contact throughout this journey that I've been coaching. So um, I, I'm excited to be back here with him. 